Okay, awesome. And we're we live? are live. Yes, we are. We're live. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, so, how are you doing, yeah. Simone? Thanks for having me. I'm so thrilled to have you. We've been talking about meeting like this and doing a, a live session for a while now. So finally, we get to be here. So thank yeah. you also for joining us. And thank you to all the viewers who are tuning in. Um, welcome to the very first session of In the Fifth with Simone. <laughs> so where the fifth comes from is actually the fifth dimension for anybody who is tuned in to that um, stream of consciousness. Um, and the intention of the channel is basically just to bring all information, wisdom, experiences, knowledge, relating to consciousness, greater consciousness, expanded consciousness, healing, uh, metaphysics, anything that kind of gives us a platform and information to expand. So today we have joining with us for the very first episode, Anthony Brown, welcome Anthony. Um, just a little background, uh, Anthony and I actually study at the same university, the University of Metaphysics, and he's a doctoral student at the moment. So we're moving through the program together. So that's very exciting. Anthony, I'm not gonna do a long introduction, but this guy is really, full of interesting experiences, wisdom, knowledge. So I'm really looking forward to an exciting episode. Let's have fun today. Anthony, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and tell the viewers a little bit about yourself. Sure, thank you, Simone. Thank yeah. you for having me. Um, yeah. Viewers, thanks for coming. Thanks for checking us out. Uh, my name is Anthony Benton Brown. Um, I, um, I'm a student of metaphysics. That's, it's been one of my passions for quite a long time. And, uh, you know, um, I'm a, a businessman. Besides that, I own a couple businesses and and have been doing that for a little while and um, just trying to have as much fun in life as possible and and uh, and do do as much good as you can. Right. So that's that's kind of where I'm at right now. Uh, yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you so much, Anthony. So you started off with languages, right? You have a yeah. degree in Spanish. What do you have a degree in Spanish and modern languages? Right. So how did you go from that to metaphysics? Can you give us the rundown? Sure, yeah. So I was 11 years old and I fell into the, I fell in love with the language of Spanish. So I started to study and I didn't stop studying until, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm continuing to study basically. Uh, it, it's just never stopped. I got my degree in it and I, I had no idea what I was going to get my, um, my bachelor's in and my decided to study Spanish and I didn't want to be a teacher. And so um, I, I got this book called the best, you know, um, career paths for um, uh, uh, language um, students. And, and one of them was interpreting. And, and I heard a few people in the Seattle area, uh, some of my friends, parents and different people around that were doing interpreting as a, um, as a profession. So I, I decided to uh, leave the hotel industry that I was in for about a year uh, oh, wow. okay. and, uh, and, and get into uh, actual professional medical interpreting because I was doing all the interpreting and translation for the hotel at that time for the Seattle Hilton. But uh, yeah, yeah. How long did you do interpreting for? I did interpreting for what, since 2002, 2003, okay. 2003 Good till question. about 2012. And then I, I kind of opened up my, my, you know, uh, my agency and and I was only doing agency stuff after that it just kind of being a business owner and uh, working yeah. in the background yeah, yeah. so how did you go from that as a career yeah. to yeah. metaphysics and the interest in energy and consciousness and all these phenomenal topics how how did that switch happen how did you transition sure yeah so I was um always um, in, into energy and into uh, studying different philosophies, especially Eastern philosophies uh, in regards to God and all that is and creation and, you know, how things basically move and nature. It's, it's just all um, so in, in, enticingly intriguing. So uh, I, I always knew I wanted to help people, right? And, yeah. and, I, and I was doing that quite a bit as an interpreter. Uh, but it, there was always an, I was, I was the bridge, you know, I, um, there was always 
other people that that had a lot of energy and a lot of times it was negative um, that I saw was affecting those patients. Um, so 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 that that's when I started to really think like oh I think it's deeper than just you know studying uh, uh, medicine right and 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 knowing all the facts. Uh, it has a lot to do with energy and presence and things like that. Um, I I did a lot of um, drinking and drugging and you know um, self medicating back in the day, and yeah. and so it it kind of st- started to lose its uh, uh, lose its shine and it wasn't really working for me anymore. Uh, I, I was I was more and more depressed, more and more socially anxious. And, uh, and in 2007, I stumbled and I started to hear voices and things like that. And I needed to do something, you know, um, do you think that was, um, okay. Do you think that was kind of an awakening in, in the process of happening? Or do you think it was more like because of the stress and the anxiety that was maybe influencing something chemical? What do you think those voices were more connected? It could have to? been influencing something, you know, chemical. It could okay. have been, you know, um, pre-schizophrenia and you okay. know not certain which which a lot of people say that that's also um a, a gift you know like people with schizophrenia yeah. are mediums and things like that clairvoyance and I'm but, very um, interested in that yeah 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 but I stumbled yeah. upon the 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 secret in 2007 and and that just kind of got me into the metaphysics thing the manifestation thing the I am's yeah. the um um uh, positive affirmations stuff like that, 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 that could actually change your life that could, you know, completely put you in the, you know, in, uh, uh, in the driver's seat, right? So yeah. you can grab yeah. the wheel and, yeah. and, and not necessarily have this consciousness that's everywhere all the time. And, and, and you have no idea what's going on and you don't have any um, say to it, you know, more like it's, it's kind of like you're being thrown around by the universe or by God or by um, your subconscious mind. And yeah. so <laughs> I think most of us relate to, to that, right? Um, yeah. We're kind yeah. of just moving around, not really with the with the, with the mind for where we're going, what we're doing, why we're doing it. And I think so much of the time, just touching on on that period of depression that you went through, um, that so much of the time, being in our own minds and being with ourselves is so difficult. It's yeah. so um, it's it's painful to because the minute you silence the distractions, you get to see what's really going on beneath the surface. And um, we don't want to know. We don't want to know. It's like you'd rather leave those things kind of hidden in the shadow, right? right? And I guess the path of awakening and the path of, of spiritual evolution, right? The topic of today's conversation is yeah. moving from that unconscious state, that, that state of kind of walking around with a blindfold over your eyes to a state of um, expanded awareness. But that expansion has to start with expanding within your own being, understanding what's going on in that shadow so that you can open up with a pure, a pure kind of cleaner heart to right. more, right? Yeah, keep going. So how did what, what, the progression, how did you go more deeply into how did you find the university? And Sure, yeah. Like a, yeah. a lot of times I was um, running away from my feelings, like you were saying, you, you have to kind of go inside and, 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 and do a little bit of digging around and, you know, shadow work, yeah. Um, yeah. figure out, you know, what's going on, what's, what, what are these things that are coming up from your subconscious mind that is actually affecting you um, in your day-to-day um, living, you know, um, yeah. and so, yeah, I, I just, I just started with that, I just got into Christian mysticism, you know, did some reading in that, did a lot of yeah. the I am discourses, I, I, I listened to that every single day, um, and, and it was just, completely and totally eye-opening, uh, manifested quite a bit of things uh, on purpose, deliberately, as opposed to um, Ooh, not having this was control of what you manifest, right? And, and then yeah. manifesting the wrong things as opposed to the things yeah. you actually want. Um, yeah. You know, uh, uh, people think that um, luck is, is just luck, you know, uh, uh, but there's, you know, there, there's actually uh, Energy. Um, a thing to manifesting what you want out yeah. of life. And, and, and so- How about we just but, touch on that just briefly for, for the viewers, sure. um, what that actually looks like, what, what it looks like to manifest consciously. How do we 
go from manifesting our experience of reality, which we are doing anyway, even though we're doing it unconsciously, because right. everything kind of works with vibration and intention, whether we're aware of it or not, right? So right. how do we make the shift to, to um, manifesting consciously the things that we desire? Sure. Everybody takes a different path, I guess, but my path was and 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 I think it's pretty important to begin with this is check to see what your mind is telling you check to see what your thoughts are like slow down and and really focus in on what your mind is saying right because um if if it's coming out with complete negativity if if it's putting you down if it's putting everybody else down around you um or you know that, that's just an example or um you know, which, which happens to a lot of people and happened to me too, then, then you're going to have to reprogram all of that. And, and, and that's one thing, that's probably the first thing to do before you manifest uh, or before you try to manifestation is, is working on, on your, yourself first and working on your thoughts because you can be your worst enemy for oh, sure. Yeah. Oh, yes. yeah. And yeah. And, and then um, after that, I mean, it, it, it really is just, a lot of mindset stuff, like, uh, I know a lot of people don't feel that they're worthy to have more in life. You yeah, know, that's a big one. We they, self-sabotage they, because of that, right? They, they like feel you like want they these things, but you, there's a deeper part of you that may not be in the front of your conscious mind that is saying, no, I, I, I don't actually deserve this thing. So I'm like in the front of my mind, I'm saying, yes, I want this thing. Yes, I'm going to do this thing. Yes, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm pumping yourself up. And then there's a deeper part that's, that's whispering in the back of your mind that that deeper part is then actually steering what vibration comes out, right? And then what you end up attracting. So even if you think you're saying and doing things the right way, but you're manifesting something completely different than what, it's because that that deeper voice that is um, there is actually a book that I've been listening to, um, an ascension guide. It's a channeled guide, um, and one of the sessions had this this beautiful little saying that stood out to me. And they said, um, while you are um, in your day, just whatever you're doing, whatever action you take, think about what aspect of yourself is taking that action because the aspect of yourself that's taking that action is going to be what you're going to create right so mm. if i'm taking that action from the from the space of anxiety and and desperation for my situation to change i'm mm. going to i'm putting that energy into the action that i'm taking and so that action is now kind of lined with that energy and will bring more of that energy back into my experience so right. I thought that was just such a wonderful kind of, it, it really kind of hit home for me when I heard that. It's like, I've dabbled a little bit in, in understanding the law of attraction, but I know that you go much deeper um, into that. On that note, can you um, share a little bit about what you actually do to help people? Like, like what do you do? What work do you do? Um, um, sure. what, what services you offer for people sure. to kind of, journey with you if they want to kind of dig into becoming conscious um i, I do word? coaching i do <laughs> co coaching you know a little bit of um um counseling um mm -hmm. also hypnosis is 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 big okay. um but you know i mean it's it's all um meditation i mean we're in hypnosis all the time like every single day we're in hypnosis when we drive down the street we're in hypnosis when we listen to a politician you know we're we're, we're being hypnotized uh, um when you watch a movie you're in hypnosis i mean so uh everybody thinks that it's like the boogeyman I mean, not everybody but it, it, sometimes it has that taboo type of um you know uh, um feeling about it but um so so yeah that, that's what i do that's what i do um, Are there any dangers when it comes to hypnosis? I mean, I've been hypnotized before and I do self-hypnosis as taught through our course, right? All the time through all my meditations. But for whoever is listening that maybe has not kind of been exposed to hypnosis before or has that view that it is dangerous and scary and 
what can you say to that? Is there, um, is it yeah. dangerous and scary? Are yeah, there no, dangers? I mean, Are there risks? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, no, it's it's not dangerous. You can't get stuck in hypnosis. Um, you uh, uh, most of the people that you see on the stage are um, um, are actually doing, you know, with stage hypnosis, they're actually doing things out of their own will. Like they're they're clucking like a chicken because they want to. They want to have fun. They want to have a good time, you know. Yeah. And, and and of course, they're like. <laughs> Um, they're very relaxed, you know, yeah. um, and, 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 and they want to, you know, do that. They want to be in that situation. Um, you know, um, so nobody can be forced to do something that they don't want to do. Nobody can be forced to do something that they, that they don't want to do. Um, and yeah, because you, you can almost be out and, and those people that don't want to do something because they just, they just don't feel like doing it. On, on the stage hypnosis, they just, you know, they, they sit down and they're not doing anything. So those are the people that get sent off of the stage, because if, okay. if you've ever seen a, a show, like they, they'll, yeah. send, they'll send the people off, uh, you know, the people that aren't as, um, you know, responsive as other folks, you know, we'll say it that way. Um, so yeah, it's, it's definitely not dangerous. Uh, you, you want to trust the person basically who, you know, who, who's doing hypnosis with you uh, yeah. just because, of energy, you know, reasons of energy and things like that. Be yeah, you know, yeah. uh, uh, I was just uh, uh, um, uh, taking a class for meditation, and 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 this uh, guy was giving a speech, and he's uh, he was talking about the importance of presence, uh, and yeah. you know, for in psychiatry and you know, coaching and counseling, and you know, when you when you're, when you're when you're a medical doctor or whatever, right? I mean, the importance of presence it, it can heal. Um, whatever you say can be healing. It, it doesn't matter what you say. Uh, your presence a lot of times could be the thing that is healing. So that's um, uh, a new thing that they're starting to study and and re and do research on in meditation. And when you say and presence, I'm, I'm you mean coming into the now? No, when, when I say presence, well, yeah, I mean, yeah, because. Uh, as a, a uh, provider, um, yeah, yeah, just being present, being aware, being with the person, uh, being vulnerable, uh, and and uh, and um, like the availability. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but I'm talking about your, your presence, just like how you know how you carry yourself, your energy. Uh, okay. More, okay. More than anything, um, can can heal. And and when I look back at uh, all the years that I was an interpreter, uh, the best, uh, the best doctors were the most personable ones. They were the most, uh, they had the best presence, you know, and, and, and that's okay. when okay. the patients would walk out and say, yeah, I, I feel way better. They hadn't had any medication yet. You know, it's, it's just because of the presence. Um, so, so, so that's really important. And, and I'm just getting back to, you know, why I, I got on the presences because, you, you want to trust your, you know, the, the guy or the, the gal who's doing hypnosis with you. Um, yeah, presence is important. Okay, okay, I see. So um, just diving a little bit into, because I think this is connected to, to energy as well, right? Because presence also kind of, everything is energy, everything is in constant motion, everything is, right? So yeah. that presence may be bringing ourselves into um, not just awareness of ourselves, but awareness of what is around us, like full presence and full awareness of what's around us. Um, mm -hmm. how, can you speak a little to, um, like I know you did a little bit of Reiki as well. So there was some interest in, in energy work there. Can we chat a little bit about energy and how you think that influences um, our lives, basically, how that is? Yes, it also touches on the law of attraction, but I want to go a little deeper into, into energy and energy work and how people can, can maybe use it more intentionally mm -hmm. through presence and through whatever other means, yoga, meditation, whatever other means, but how can we use energy? How can we, how yeah, does I, it I, work? <laughs> I, I got attuned for Reiki and, and I've, I've uh, done a little bit um, uh, on family and friends and on myself, uh, some distance, uh, mostly just in person. But yeah, I mean, energy healing and energy work is, is a real thing. Uh, they have full hospitals in China uh, where they only do energy healing. Uh, they don't do any type of invasive procedure. Uh, wow. You know, um, so it's, it, it's real and, and it's yeah. measurable. 
uh, we, we all have um, our, you know, we're um, electromagnetic beings uh, and, and we all can connect to the field. We all can connect to source. We can all connect to God. Therefore, we have uh, access to that omnipotence, um, uh, the omnipotence. Uh, and, and so we can put that into action and actually heal without any type of invasive anything. So, um, so yeah, I mean, we, I've, I've done healing groups, you know, a group of four or five or six of us, um, eight of us, 10 of us, you know, just depending, um, um, would get together and, and we would say, okay, well, it's my turn, uh, my foot hurts, or uh, I, I really wanna turn this financial situation around. Um, you know, whatever's going on. We can and use we energy for all, that too, right? Yeah, would, it doesn't yeah, just have to all, be physical. Right. We would all meditate on it. We, I mean, that's also a lot of attraction and things like that. And, um, mm. and, 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 you know, visualization and things, but yeah, we would all meditate on it and, and pray on it and, you know, whatever you want to call it. And we would do our healing for it. And, mm. you know, pain goes away. Um, I know Joe Dispenza does a lot of, uh, uh healing, uh, work also. Uh, you should check yeah. him out. Um, yeah. but, but it, 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 all comes down, you know, to a, a science of how, um, our, our energy, our feelings, our emotions can, um, take, can, can heal. I mean, it, and, and it, it can take away pain. It can take away cancer. Uh, it's, it's amazing what you can do and, and more, you know, you, you've heard of people having these miracles and things like that, but we're learning to do it deliberately now. Yeah, and, yeah. and, and, and so all these, you know, superhuman innate powers, it's, it's, it's not like, um, it's, it's only superheroes and it's not like it's, um, um, only the, you know, the, 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 the um, the, the most gifted people, like anybody has access to this, but you have to really cultivate it. And, yes, and it starts I with, want to meditation. Talk about. it starts with, it's, it starts with going Prison. inside, right. <laughs> going inside, going within, and and uh, and healing yourself from that inside out. I've done some Reiki as well, and I I know the benefits of that that energy work. That sometimes it's instant, um, yeah. it's instantaneous. Where I will start a session, and I've had one person speak about a, a sore wrist, but we weren't going in to heal the wrist. We were going in um, for more of a, it was more of a journey. So she was kind of more open um, mentally and emotionally to whatever consciousness wanted to, to um, reveal or wherever the journey was gonna take her. So um, we had some amazing experiences with, with that. But at the end of it, she was like, I didn't even realize, but my wrist is completely pain-free now. We, we didn't even spend time focusing on that. I didn't even know she had a sore wrist. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and there have been other, other cases like that even during my own sessions. And I also saw a video um, of, I don't know, it was, it was a while back, but it, I think it was a, a hospital in China, maybe one of those energy healing hospitals. I didn't know that they have complete hospitals just dedicated to that. Yeah. That's pretty phenomenal. Yeah. Um, but I saw like a time-lapsed video um, over a period of, of, of weeks or something of, I, I believe, I could be mistaken, energy healing, reducing the size of a tumor yeah. in the body and then taking scans of that process. And that was just so fascinating to watch. That was before I started my own journey through healing. And back then it's like, there's so much curiosity to yeah. what's going on around us and where do we find this information? And then one day somebody pops up on your feed talking about energy healing right. and right. supernatural abilities. And it's like, oh, heck, right. there are places that actually have this information available. Um, oh. Anthony, you, I just want to want to talk a little bit about the collective conscious or consciousness, because you have a little thing that you're running with meditation, mm -hmm. where you um, want to bring a group of one billion people together to meditate together to raise the collective consciousness. Is right? that crazy? You mentioned it. I think it's absolutely doable. It's absolutely but, nuts. <laughs> but you know what? Those are the best. Like, okay, today I had no idea, or, or rather a week ago, I had no idea that I'd be having this chat with you. And I, yeah. had, I, I had no idea that I, I even had it in me to do this. 
So like I make little videos <laughs> and I, yeah, I yeah. edit them and then I post them, but I've never done a live. I've done one live on a podcast with somebody oh, yeah. else as a guest. You've always had it in you. <laughs> I'm just, but, I know I'm saying thank you but there's that <laughs> doubt right there's that doubt yeah. that I mean is this even possible is this even like years ago I'd heard of of astral projection and things and we'll come to that when we start talking about oh, um yeah. superhuman um capabilities oh, but yeah. I want to keep that for the end because I think that's like our sweet spot I'm, I'm totally a nerd <laughs> right <laughs> so um, and you hear about those things and it's like, oh, you know, how cool is this to hear? But you don't actually think it's really possible. It's like, oh, it's just yeah. a story. Yeah. You know, it's not actually a real thing that's possible. So how through your meditation goal of one billion and the crazy things, those are the things that are worth kind of hopping on board with the things that you can't imagine being possible. Um, <laughs> how, how far we've come as a species, whether you want to call this progress or not, depending on your worldview, right? Um, yeah. How far we've come because there have been people that have been willing and um, have trusted themselves to dream so big and completely mm -hmm. shut out the mm -hmm. narrative that's happening around them and allow themselves mm -hmm. to just step into that um, creative experience mm -hmm. of reality. So how do you um tell us about this thing let me not direct the question tell us about this raising of consciousness through one billion meditators sure i was um listening to uh as um a zen monk the other day and and he was talking about how you know when there's a bunch of chaos going on then there's always the opposite yin yang there's a bunch of beautiful things and amazing light workers happening at the same time uh yes. I was I was thinking about doing this billion uh, person meditation project years ago, and then I saw one somebody try to do it last year. I think in 2020, I was like, "Oh, she beat me to it." <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, "Oh, that's amazing!" So, so like uh, th that thought is all all you know. It, nothing is new in the universe and, and the God, right? It, yeah. It's it's been around and it's spinning around more and more, and there's more and more yeah. people who are you know interested in in um, in really helping out humanity. And, and that's kind of where I think the stage that we're at now in earth on earth and um, people are ready but, for a change. Yeah, totally. I mean, and it all has to do with this um, metaphysical, um, this um, scientific uh, um, fact that we can all connect and, and, and we are all connected. Uh, um, energy doesn't die. Uh, I, I can I can send good vibes to you from here to South Korea. And, and you'll be feeling them, even if I don't tell you, you know, I mean, stuff like that, uh, you with with uh, with all the different um, experiments that they've done with with positive thinking, you know, how you can make a plant grow larger, how you can, you know, change the, um, um, the, the frequency of, of water so that it looks, you know, amazing with these geometrical shapes, right? Um, uh, sacred geometry. Um, so like you know we're all connected they, they they find out that that dark matter is actually um is is not it, you know space isn't just empty it's it's this matter that connects absolutely everything uh you know with with um um uh with quantum physics uh, you have a quantum entanglement, entanglement right and, yeah you, know, you, you can have one <laughs> Uh, one photon here and then another photon on the other side of the universe and if, if you mess with one and, and it moves and it's moving you know uh, um, the other one is at the same exact time you know so yeah. space and time um, all collapse all relative but yeah I mean it's, it's all relative like you you um, you measure the the Schumann resonance when when 9-11 happens and 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 this, this is just feelings you know, this is just yeah. metaphysical psychic energy going out to the universe and 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 causing you know the, the shoe resonance to 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 raise, right? Yes. Um, it's 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 all connected, right? Uh, and, and just for the viewers, my, my, Michael just Jackson. Know, what is the Schumann resonance? Sorry. I don't even. I don't even know what the human resonance to be. To, to be honest, the human resonance is is like is like the, like the uh, pulse of the earth or something. The pulse of the earth, right? Yeah, it's the pulse of the earth, right? Right, something right. Something like that. Yeah, yeah. Um. So, 
you know, Michael Jackson dies, anything that crazy, that, that's crazy that happens you know, that everybody knows about, and it, it affects everybody, right? Um, there, there was a study done uh, with some meditators, about 10,000, 10, 15,000 of them, and I think it was Israel in the 80s, about 84, and um, they were, were meditating and, and praying uh, to improve a, a war that was going on in Afghanistan or something like that. And, 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 and while they were praying for that whole week or what have you, uh, it was almost a ceasefire. They like all of a sudden stopped, stopped shooting each other. So like, like if you get enough people together, you can definitely make changes. And that's not the only time that that's happened before. Um, so, and you know, when, when you go through the scientific method, you can get it down to like, okay, one in a billionth chance that that was just a chance. Right. Um, yeah i don't so believe we, in chance i think everything is connected to everything as you said and that totally, there is but, some cause that affects right. the effect <laughs> right right but but when when you start measuring spirituality and, and all these things that you, you you've always thought were you know just fantasy uh with science like they're doing right now um it's it's really exciting time you know yeah yeah yeah. So where can people find this one billion? Do you have a group on Facebook or somewhere where people can connect? Where no. are you? How do you plan on, on bringing this forward? Just spreading yeah, I, the love? Or do you have a time set? Or what, what's the, what's, what is your, how are you visualizing this thing happening? I just started um, a, a meditation group, but it's, it's pretty exclusive. It's for uh, parents okay. who have children on the autism spectrum and and okay. so so growing that right now um I, I i i have some big ideas but you know there's some things that are manifesting right now that need that need to play out you know and, and go okay. through its course in order for me to okay. uh, really concentrate on that project but okay. um everything you is working. the intention everything is working exactly as it should um everything yeah. is coming together beautifully synchronistically um, yes. and, uh, and it's, it's, it's a joy to, to watch it happen. Sometimes I get a little antsy, uh, because, you know, you can ask for something to manifest, but it's not going to manifest on the time. I mean, like right away, you know, and, and, we and have it, a time all, delay. and it, doesn't, it doesn't always look like what you think it's going to look like, you know, it's, it, it, it could come in way different than what you're, what, you, what you're, um, expecting. And, and I think that's when people really get it wrong is, 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 is when they try to control it or, or when they get really, um, when they get really disappointed saying, Oh God, God just didn't want this for me or the universe didn't want this for me, you know, and it's just, yeah. uh, and, 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 and they get discouraged uh, as opposed to keeping your high vibration, keeping your frequency, keeping positive um, and, yes. and, and being okay uh and being that calm in the storm in the eye of the storm so it's very important when you manifest yes 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 okay so you set the intention it's out there now it's already yes. happening yes yes i'm getting fantastic. a billion people together one way or the other to meditate fantastic <laughs> I, I we will put your 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 details um in the caption below so that people can find you um but moving on to food. So I know that currently you are on a juicing cleanse. There it is. Would you tell us a little bit about that? Or before we actually come onto the juicing cleanse, sure. how did your journey with food start? What brought you that, to that shift in sure. consciousness that, that kind of moved you off of the standard American that you were eating a standard American diet, I'm assuming before your shift or? Yeah. Okay, so yeah. what brought you to that that shift? What happened there? I was feeling sluggish. I, I just wasn't feeling right. Um, my my health was wasn't as as good as I wanted it to be, um, and and I, I I I was I wanted to lose weight. And this is when it really started, and I, I just dropped cream. You know, I said I'm not going to you know, drink cream in my coffee anymore. And I dropped five pounds. Like, Oh, I feel a little lighter. I feel a little better, you know? And then uh, <laughs> started to eat some more vegetables and I was like, Oh, that feels really good. You know? And then, you know, switch to straight organic. And then, you know, and my son has autism. So we, we tried the gluten-free dairy-free uh, diet, which didn't too much, yeah. didn't, do, didn't do too much for him. Uh, but, um, you know, it just depends on the person with, with that in regards to that. But 
Um, but I, I just kept on going with it, you know, and I was like, oh, this feels way better, you know, gluten-free, uh, uh, organic. And, and knowing that I was, you know, giving my children, this, you know, the, the best food that they could have, it was also important, but just taking care of everybody around me. Um, I, I just started feeling better and better. And then all of a sudden, like, um, I, I, I heard about this like seven day vegan challenge and I say, like, okay, I can do this for seven days. I, dairy, I, it, it always makes me bloated and fart, you know, every two seconds. So I, was, <laughs> <laughs> I was okay with letting go of that. Uh, <laughs> and, and I did it for like, you know, you know, the first three or four days was real difficult. And, and, but after that, I mean, it was just like, oh my gosh, it's, it's just a huge difference. My frequency just feels this has been lifted, you know, my vibration. I mean, and, and your, your thoughts are clear. You see, I mean, you, you taste things like way more like, and things taste better yeah. that didn't taste good before. And, you know, like I vegetables, and things like that. that. Like, you know, I, I, I think that it has to do with your, your body remembering, you know, because your, your body is, is very, um, well, it's resilient, but it's very intelligent. And, yeah. and, and you know, what you need if you let it know what you need as long as you get all that gunk out of it then yeah. it can say okay i need this mineral that mineral this vitamin and 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 that food looks really good although i yeah. never really eat it and then you try it and you're like oh my god it's amazing and this is you know this is what's feeding my soul and my body right now is is, is these good nutrients that i'm eating so um that's how i started that was five years ago and haven't stopped wow I'm transitioning currently, so it's still quite new for me. Uh, um, I did start to be a little more mindful about what I consume maybe two years ago. Um, and then I did mm -hmm. a course in just to, just to understand the basics, not to help anybody, but just to kind of like, I don't know where to start. I don't know what this even means. How do I eat a balanced diet? So I did a short little course um, in whole, a raw whole food diet. Cool. Um, which did include some grains, which meant there was an element of cooking. So I guess maybe more than 75% raw. Um, mm. And I, I started to kind of introduce that more slowly into my own diet. Uh -huh. And um, I, I, yeah, I just, I, I, I know what you mean about things tasting richer and like, like the vegetables suddenly they're like oh my gosh these bell peppers are so delicious I hated <laughs> bell peppers before you know and and I decided to go through my transition because I am really deeply into the spiritual energetic stuff as well so right. for me it's more about how many more aspects of my life can I drop density in and food was the last one right Right. So food yeah. is like, okay, yeah. you're dropping density in all these other aspects, toxicity, you're doing that work. Hmm. Now it's time to start dropping density and toxicity and right. raising the vibration as that density drops through food. So I, I am totally connecting with what you're saying. Tell us about your juicing challenge or challenge, what is it, seven day? Yeah, so it's diet. seven day. Cleanse. Yeah, seven day juicing chakra diet cleanse. I mean, and we're on like five five right now. We, we, um, we went, you know, red, orange, red, red for the root, you know, yes. orange for uh, sacral, and then um, yeah. um, yellow for uh, solar plexus, and um, green for heart. And now we're at uh, we're at blue, but we we kind of put in blue and purple, and okay. you know, for the last three, so it's just easier to juice. But uh, yes, yes. Okay. okay. So I'm on day five of no food. And, and like, but before I, I've done fasting before and I do a lot of um, intermittent fasting, which is like 16 hours of not eating. Yeah. Um, and, and, and then breaking the fast after that. But um, I'm on day five. I, I've only done 48 hours before this. And it's, it's, it's interesting. Oh, I, wow. I, I don't feel, I don't feel like I really need food too much. I'm, I'm missing it a little bit, but otherwise yeah. I'm not craving it. I don't get that, that, appetite that you know that stomach no growling no nothing um yeah it's pretty cool you know and and, and you, we're, we're gonna talk about uh uh superhuman um innate potential and capabilities but uh uh you know there's people out there that don't eat for years i mean and and they just drink juices and you know different things like that and liquids and years and and, yeah. and you know um it just we we, we get you all of the survive. nutrients it can be helpful from from the universe we, we get all of it from the ethers 
Um, we already do get a lot of it from the ethers. Like we, we only eat, you know, 1500 to 2,500 calories a day, <clears throat> but our body would need 15,000 calories a day if we were only relying on those nutrients. Right. But we're relying, but we get the nutrients and minerals and vitamins from, from, from the sun, from the universe, from everywhere. Everybody does. The air, prana. Yeah, yeah. Right. Right, right. That, that so, is fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, the, 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 I think when you start raising your vibration frequency and start doing this inner work, um, that that's when things like this get a little easier. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm actually learning about the connection now between um, going through that dropping of density from the spiritual perspective, in other words, or the energetic perspective of um, light body activation or ascension, right? Yeah. So more light being flooded into the cells and as more light is flooded into the cells, it drops density and toxicity. And, and now from the other yeah. side, so I've had that activation and the dropping of density and toxicity. In other words, the cells are now able to use light, more light as a source of sustenance, right? right, right. And now from, from, the, from, the, from the, the physical side, changing the diet so coming up now from the physical side rather from the etheric side coming down and so kind of so that's that's the journey that i'm on now is dropping yeah. even more toxicity and more density to allow the cells to be able to use more light as a source of of energy so i yeah. totally understand that the more healing work you do and the more you kind of do that that inner work and that shifting of consciousness it shifts your 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 mind it shifts your emotions it shifts what you consume around you it shifts and then it starts to filter down into your into your cells and into your dna and and now coming up from the food side um it definitely helps to shed even more of that density so i i totally yeah. see the benefit the benefit yeah. of that oh, yeah okay yeah, yeah, it's feeling good. I'm feeling really good right now. Um, a little bit earlier, I, 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 I don't know if it was because I was around too many EF, EMF waves and Wi-Fi and mm -hmm. stuff, but I, I was feeling a little, you know, um, disoriented. But I, I went outside and and just, you know, felt completely better right away. Um, but I mean, you know, sometimes you feel that way when you're not fasting. <laughs> so yes, <laughs> yes, that's true. That's so true. Yeah, I'd love to give a juicing cleanse a try sometime but I think right now and and this is I think something also really important for the listeners to hear is that changing your diet too quickly can be harmful mm. um, and it's maybe something that I don't see a lot of people talking about when they talk about the shift in in diet or when they talk about eating a completely raw vegan diet or juicings or breatharianism whatever <laughs> you know that they don't talk about they don't talk enough about the dangers so i think just a side note for the listeners is to go slowly if you do have the desire to change your diet and you do have the desire to introduce more um, healthy um, alternatives and slowly decrease um the dense toxic stuff yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, um, I definitely did it slowly i, I started yeah. off really slow as i said cream and then you know uh more vegetables less meat you know and yeah. then the dairy went and then you know gluten went i mean it, it was all, it was a very slow process for me so yeah i, yeah. I, I can definitely yeah. see that yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so my favorite topic um oh, this conversation coming on to superhuman capabilities. I haven't yes. dived deeply into it, but I've had some pretty interesting experiences myself. And I find yeah. it the most fascinating of all the topics because I think it really shows how much spirituality can evolve in a human being. You sure. know, that we can come from this completely contracted state yeah. of just kind of blindfolded walking around no idea what we're doing and why we're doing it right to slowly starting the healing process and acknowledging ourselves acknowledging that deeper aspect that hidden aspect that poor little kid that's been crying inside and behind the burglar bars for all its life right <laughs> and allowing, <laughs> that's a good those way to bars, <laughs> allowing those bars to break down and 
stretching them open and allowing that poor little kid to come out and play and then dropping density, expanding. Putting your ass right slowly. here, Superman or Superwoman. You know? Hell yes, because you become your own superhero. Totally. And then you start to wake up more interesting abilities the deeper you go. And like yeah. you said, this is available to absolutely everybody on the planet. It is not exclusive yeah. to special people, yeah. right? So yes, let's hear your interest in that. Where <laughs> did that come from? How, what well, are you interested in specifically? Uh, through through med meditation, doing meditation a lot mm. and, and, and anybody who's dealing with anxiety, depression, um, stress, anger issues, PTSD. I was just, you know, uh, reading a research paper about uh, how good meditation is for PTSD. Um, try meditation, try it out. Uh, but um, it, it, it's, it's a life changer. It, it changed my life. Um, but, but, you know, just, just through the experiences that, that I've had, um, the samadhis that I've had, you know, with, with meditation, when I say samadhi, I just mean like an awakening, a, a, a big epiphany when, when I'm meditating or when I'm in that hypnotic state, um, I'll, I'll use that um, in between sleep and, 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 and awakeness. I've, I've experienced some absolutely amazing things. Um, uh, you know, you, people talk about parallel universes and all that stuff. I, uh, visiting those and and um, and you know, jumping into other people's bodies and, and helping them out and then jumping right out. You know, stuff like that. I just see. started doing that, of course, with permission. <laughs> But I didn't even realize that that was possible. And the I mean, other day, I just had this urge to do it. I didn't even yeah. think about it. It was just like, yeah. okay, you need to do this now. And so yeah. I just projected myself into really? your body and did the healing work through your body and expanded that energy and that consciousness from within them through yeah. me. So there was no more this filtering through my yeah. body and into them like Reiki does, right? It was now directly straight into them. And they actually said that they felt heart opening symptoms, pain in the chest, in the front and the back, as well as pain and pressure in, in the crown area and they never get headaches. So it was like, there's an opening of energy that is flowing through your body that has not happened before. And that's also why we can feel that. So that is fantastic and phenomenal. Keep going. Yes. What else? That's what most, most healers do. Like the, the best healers do that. They, 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 you know, they imagine because imagination is real, right? Yes. Anything you imagine, you know, exists in a different parallel universe at the same exact time. Um, the, you know, the, uh, there's only one, one moment and this is the huge moment that we're in. This is, I mean, there, there's no time past, present, future all happening right now. Um, yeah. but, um, yeah, no, I mean, so so that, that that's just one huge thing that healers do is is jump into people's bodies. But this was this was like an experience in which I didn't know this person. Um, I all of a sudden I'm in a courtyard, uh, and then oh. my my spirit, and then I see like these these guys um, approaching this one guy, and it, and it didn't look like it was going to be good. And then all of a sudden, my my consciousness, spirit, whatever you want to call it, jumps into him, and fights the dudes off. And I had a backpack on a dude had a backpack on and, and, and so they started running and then, and then my, I picked up my, his backpack and, and just left his body and he was done. Like, I was like, Oh my gosh. So I was thinking, I was like, well, are, are we the, you know, are, are we the, uh, um, the angel protectors? Are we, you know, the, uh, guardian angels, right? It's it, that, so that opened up some interesting thoughts, you know, for me, but, um, you know, just not thinking or knowing that, that I was psychic um, or, or, or I had any type of, you know, clairvoyant abilities or, um, and then doing these healing groups and then yeah. us reading each other's minds and, and, and thinking the exact same thoughts while we're doing these healings. I was like, oh man, this is amazing. Connection I had no idea so that I can even it. do anything like this. You know, you, you watch these psychic yeah. mediums on TV and you're like, or whatever you know you're like yeah. i definitely don't have that that's amazing and and you know I, I i could never imagine me doing that but you know i we were doing it right um what what else i mean you know just just hearing about these different things knowing that there's research out there that 
um, that has proved that you can go back into time and change what happened. Uh, they, they have this, um, um, this random um, event generators, an REG, and, and, uh, and, and, and you, you put it so that it clicks a specific amount of times a minute. So maybe it clicks maybe 20 mm -hmm. times a minute. And, and you record it on a, on a tape cassette or whatever. Uh, you, uh, you have some, you know, healers, meditators, you know, uh, uh, medium psychics or what have you, you know, some, somebody, you know, the mystics, you, you get them together and, and you say, change the, the, uh, um, the speed in which that REG is going. Uh, you make it slower. Uh, they didn't listen to it. They didn't listen to the cassette. They didn't know how many times, you know, it, it went. And then, they played the cassette a second time and it actually changed the same exact cassette. So, so there's different. Mind. So, yeah, so you can change the past and you can change the future. Um, knowing all this, all this stuff exists, knowing the, the energy uh, healing Ooh. hospitals exist, knowing what we know, you know, when, when, when we do a uh, distance Reiki or distance healing, um, yeah hearing about uh, yogis who, who have a, you know, rainbow light body and, yeah. and, and all of a sudden, like uh, they, they're, they're meditating and their, their, their body decomposes and disappears within, you know, five to seven days. Um, no, yeah. Ascension, knowing all of this stuff, uh, hearing about yogis putting their hands into stones um, you, you know that there's more that meets the eye out there and and we just don't talk about it uh, I, I think it's been suppressed and there's science that that yeah. touches on this as well like putting yeah. your hand through a stone can be explained through quantum tunneling right yeah. and um well, and the double slit experiments about changing events from the past you know yeah. that the observer um the, the, I, I won't go into exactly how the experiment works, but whoever wants to look that up is welcome to. But shooting um, particles through two slits yeah. basically leaves a, a double line on the back wall, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Or a pattern, a double pattern, double line pattern in correspondence with the two slits. And then when you don't observe, it leaves a wave pattern, right? With the five yeah. lines instead. But yeah. if you observe, or if you don't observe and then you observe halfway through, you see the double line, meaning yeah. something had to kind of go back in time to yeah. change the wave pattern so yeah. that the double and line can now present itself because, yeah, yeah and, and come yeah. move back into a particle. Yeah. So yeah. I, I definitely see the possibility of changing the past and quantum mechanics explains all of this, yeah. right? If, yeah. if we take the time to kind of dig into it and to understand. Um, mm. I've had out of body experiences as well. So I know through my own experiences that there is more that if this yeah. body drops, it's okay because there is a continuation of consciousness. There is a continuation yeah. of individual consciousness if you're not right. quite ready to merge into the whole, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and um, and when I when I the first time I projected, I went into the past. I went mm -hmm. into my bedroom before the walls were painted the color that they're painted now. And I painted those walls personally about five years ago, right? Mm -hmm. Four or five years ago. And I went back to my childhood color on the walls. This is lilac. I had a lilac bedroom. <laughs> so I, yeah, I projected into, into the past. So I, I know that it's possible, even like remote viewing is possible because you, you, when, you, when you're outside of the physical body, you can move through time and space. It all becomes relative. So you can see yeah. stuff that's happening in the future. You can see stuff that's happened in the past. Yeah. And um, I think a lot of our history can be kind of, and is being um, re-explored maybe um, because most of it is not accurate. And yeah. so I think, I think we have, capabilities even even to bend matter and move matter um physical matter with our minds without touching it right. um i know that that telekinesis that that is possible as well i had a dream one night that i bent the spoon with my mind and then i woke up and <laughs> i do a little bit of channeling so immediately i woke up with this excitement and i was like okay i'm going to channel and ask my higher self is this true can i really do this 
And so I asked and I got the response, yes, you can do it. And I was like, Simone, go get a spoon, go get a spoon. You have to do this now while it's fresh in your mouth. He's like, okay, I'm actually going to go back to bed right now. So <laughs> I went back to sleep and I never did try. But <laughs> it has been, there has been this thought at the back of my mind that maybe I should take a moment one day and actually meditate on that and see because it's all about belief as well right if you don't believe it's possible then it's not possible your mind has already formed the barrier yeah. if you believe then the intention is so deeply set that it's it belief right it ends up being that key motivator to creating our reality as well right i was i was thinking about another superhuman capability and and this man that was um um that was showing how to do it or, you know, what he does. Uh, he's a, he's a healer. I think he may be a Reiki healer. I think he's from China and he can um, make um, electricity and fire come out of his uh, uh, fingers. And it's, it's so hot. And, 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 and he just, because we're, you know, electric beings in the first place, but, but he knows how to, um, you know, fr from right under his belly button, um, create that energy and shoot it out of his fingers to the point to where it burns things. So <laughs> that's, that's like, you know, that's like um, X-Men stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and people but can I mean, actually do Ray it. Right? Yeah, yeah. With Reiki, we're using intention to channel the energy through us and to make it stronger. Right. So yeah. when I'm working on somebody, I, I have to bring my mind to such a point of, of focus that if, mm -hmm. if I'm slipping all over the place and my mind is wandering, then, yeah, the energy is going to flow through, but it's going to trickle through. Yeah. But if I'm really focused on, on like um, intensifying that energy flowing through my body, I feel it more strongly. The person yeah. on the receiving end feels it more That's strongly. True. Mm -hmm. and so i think that if you can channel universal energy through intention and strengthen how much you channel through your body then right. you can also through your body um using intention direct the flow of the energy that is already within right i went to a conference the other day uh -huh. and um and so it's 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 a at the end of the conference uh, the owner of this company uh, did a presentation about what he does and the technology that he's using and uh, and he works with a bunch of different inventors and and one of the inventors or you know a couple of inventors actually um, um, they just grab the equations from the field like they literally from, from God they 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 are whatever you want to call it right they they grab the equations that they need in order to make their inventions um, from the field. And, and, and it's, and it's amazing. Like the, no reading just grabs it from the field, f figures out exactly what he needs to do in order to, um, um, in, in order to, um, uh, make a, an invention for uh, a frequency healing or, or make an invention to Nikola uh, Tesla. Yeah. Yeah. Nikola Tesla wonderful. did the same thing. So there's people yeah. that, that are still around doing that. Right. Um, yeah. yeah I mean, it's, just mind-boggling and then we call them geniuses but everybody has this capability because it's right. coming from outside of our human thinking mind it's tapping into all the more right so that's, that's what i want to do um is figure out like what how you know um how can we bring that to the masses so that we can you know um live in a a, a better society than we are right now and I think there are so many of us who are currently journeying with this, bringing the light, bringing wisdom, bringing knowledge, bringing healing and expanded yeah. consciousness to our little corners of the world. And there are more and more people waking up to this and more and more people who are um, unlocking their own potential to create, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and as we do that, we're definitely forming a new world. Right. You know, mm -hmm. one, one person at a time, one corner at a time. And there is no little bit of sharing of wisdom and love and light that is unnoticed, that is, right. un, un, that is not part of the collective consciousness or the raising of that collective consciousness. So every right. little bit of, of engagement and encouragement and of self healing and exploration is contributing to 
a better world. Right. One happy person at a time. <laughs> exactly. That's right. Anthony, so we're at the end of our time and it's been such a oh, phenomenal cool. conversation. I've been, yeah, we've been dying to have this chat for so long and I'm so glad that we finally made the time to do so. And it's also now got me on a roll with maybe an interesting project, right? Um, yeah. Where can people find you? Where can people find you? Can you? Yeah, they can find me at, at a, a, a Facebook, uh, Anthony Benton Brown. They can find me on Instagram, Anthony Benton Brown also, at Anthony Benton Brown, and uh, anthonybbrown.com. Those are the three places where I'm at. Okay, yeah. we'll include that in the caption as well. Um, Cool. Anthony, I could talk longer, lost... but 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 it's but it's been beautiful. Thank you so much. It has. It has. Me. There's much an endless amount of information. Yes. Thank you so much for joining. Is there anything you wanna you wanna close off with saying, or are you good? I'm good. It's a, it's just always a pleasure to see you and to talk to you, Simone. Yes. 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 Thanks again. Wonderful. Thanks. Thanks, watchers, for for listening and watching and, yeah. and tuning in. <laughs> yeah. Thanks to everybody for tuning in. See you guys soon.